I knew Paul when it was Paul and Ellen with space between those. And then I knew when it was Paul and Ellen without any space between them. Um, Paul's going to talk to you a little bit about something that he has undertaken, and I don't want to take time from him, but Paul, come up, and I'd like for you to introduce your family, and, and then talk a little bit about uh, a new opportunity that many of you are going to have. I'd like to start off by just saying how proud I am to be a Western alum. This college has this university has moved forward tremendously in the, over the years. Looking at Gatton Academy for gifted high school students. Do we have any grads of that group? No. Nope. Um, when I watch the Olympics this summer and I see Claire Donahue proudly wearing her Western swim cap, how neat that was. Then there was a football game on September 15th. Those of you may or may not have uh, remembered lately, but uh, Western played this team up the road, and gosh, that was a wonderful game. Uh, I got to kind of agree with Willie Taggart on that one too, when he complained about the kids walking around campus all that preceding week with their uh, outfits from the other team, and I'm thinking, come on, folks, let's support Western. Let's be Western supporters. Uh, Bob may not uh, remember specifically, but in 1971, he and I were at uh, Athens, Georgia, and what a proud moment that was. Beat that team up the road by 26 points or so, and then the next weekend at the Final Four in, in Houston's Astrodome. And how neat that was an occasion to be a photographer sitting on the Astrodome floor and supporting your team, of course, quietly, since I was a journalist and couldn't really show my emotions. Did have my red shirt on that day, though. <clears throat> and students who are with student publications, I hope you'll pay attention, because uh, basically what I'm starting today is something I think you'd be very interested in. Bear with me as I give you a little background. In 1965, I came to campus as a freshman. I was gonna be a vet. I was a pre-veterinary major. I was going to come here for four years and then go to Auburn University and go to vet school. As a sophomore, I took an elective. I kind of had to get rid of those basic electives that we all have to. And I saw this class called Basic Photography. And I thought, you know, that sounds like kind of fun and, and not like one of these what I called reading classes where you have to spend every night reading 10 chapters of history or some other stuff that I didn't really care that much about. And that led to working on the Herald. And while I was working on the Herald, there was this pencil-thin redhead. Somewhat quiet, but assertive, named Ellen Bennett, who was an elementary education major, who also got sidetracked, like I did, and ended up on student publications. We had many nights putting the paper to bed. In those days, when I first started, and I don't want to say these were horse and buggy days, but we were hot lead, linotype, printed down to the Daily News. These union guys would sit there and they'd bang out the letters and down, down the tray rolled the hot type. It was, it was amazing. Went from that to offset, and then today, of course, digital. I finally decided during these days of spending a lot of time with her that uh, Ellen was someone I needed to get to know. And about five years after I finished my master's, we got married. When we were students, Western was well known for its journalism program, but not necessarily for its photojournalism program. That, like Bob said, these were times where there were one, maybe two quality photographers on campus, nothing like there is today where every time you turn around you can find a good quality photographer on campus. As I was finishing up my bachelor's degree in 69, I really didn't want to leave Western. I love this place. Ellen was here. That didn't hurt. She had one more year. Bob was here. My family was here. My family. That's what you end up with with student publications. These are people you are living with, working with every day of the week, and it really 
it really meant a lot to me. Ellen finished her degree, left and went to work for the Owensboro Messenger and Inquirer. But incidentally, for some reason, she didn't have a lot of weekend jobs and she ended up spending most weekends in Bowling Green. Uh, couldn't quite figure that out, but anyway, she was here every weekend. As a grad student, I worked with the Herald, I worked with the Talisman, and I worked with any photographer I could find and tried to push them into this, this uh, field. I taught photography classes and worked with students for five semesters. Being a student with Western Publications allows something that many people don't have in other fields, and that's a learn by doing. A learn by doing. You can read all the history classes you want, you can read all the math books you want, but until you do it, and that's something that you as students can fully take advantage of. A couple of funny stories I want to tell you real quickly. Uh, that Ellen Bennett person that I've referred to took photography under that grad student named Paul Schumann and for the rest of her life never let me forget that I gave her a B in photography. <laughs> I was tough. Then with my head, my orals for my masters, I wrote a thesis and I had three people on the committee, one being Dr. Wilson Wood. After my orals where they back you up against the wall and you've got to defend your writing, Dr. Wood was kind of a short fellow, very, very countryfied. He had a real thick country accent, very nice fellow. Dr. Wood walked out and at the end of my orals, he said, Paul, you could have walked in here with a blank sheet of paper and I'd have passed you on through. And I felt like saying, why the hell didn't he tell me that six months before then? Why did he wait till then? I loved Western, I loved its students, but I thought, you know, I need to be a photojournalist now. I can return to academia later. But Ellen and I returned to campus many, many times. I think I spoke to roughly 15 uh, summer high school journalism workshops. Loved teaching others about the field and getting other people excited. And once again, as we've mentioned today already, as a side note, this program would not be near what it is today if it weren't for Bob Adams. The legacy that he leaves behind is just incredible. When I looked around the room at the retirement ceremony last year, I thought there is more accumulated talent in this room. It was incredible the amount of talent that showed up to honor the man that led us this far. The number of Pulitzer Prizes, it was incredible. Thanks, Bob, for your legacy. Uh, before I get into the big announcement, uh, I would like to mention, uh, recognize my family who's here. Ellen is looking down on us. My son Matthew, who's uh, red hair he got from his mom. I think hers was a little brighter. Uh, my favorite son-in-law, or daughter-in-law, Kristen. She's the one who looks like she swallowed a pumpkin. Uh, I'm very excited to be a grandfather coming up in a month. Uh, Robin, my daughter, who's a Western grad, did not look at another school. She was determined she was going to Western. She heard mom and dad talk about it so many years. She came here and uh, graduated in 2000 in merchandise and apparel marketing. And she now is a buyer for LDT Commodities. It's a catalog company. And she's in China on a, business, on a buying trip, which she does every October for uh, two to three weeks. And my favorite son-in-law, Scott, uh, Robin's husband also came today. I'm making a donation to the College Heights Foundation, which will provide a tuition scholarship to an active member of the student publication staff. It will be called the Paul and Ellen Schumann Student Publications Scholarship, and I'm hoping students who are here today will take advantage of this. I'd also like to challenge our alumni base 
join me. Join me in supporting the journalists and the photojournalists of the future. Contribute with a tax-deductible gift to either this fund or start your own. Support Western journalism and photojournalism students that will follow in our footsteps. Ellen and I were both products <coughs> of Western publications. She was a great wife. She was a great mother. She loved me and she loved her children. She loved Western. I lost her to Alzheimer's. It'll be two years ago at the end of this month. I sat here at the homecoming breakfast last year and Judy Ecker was looking over at me wondering why I was crying. It was the first time in 42 years I'd been on Western campus without Ellen. It was, it was tough. If I had my life to lead over again, next time I would find her sooner so that I could love her longer.